Hey everybody, I'm Elizabeth McSwan from Emac and Hedwig. In today's video, I'm going to give you some holiday gift ideas for your favorite wildlife photographer. Here we go. So the holidays are really coming up pretty fast. We're less than a week away from Christmas and even closer to the beginning of Hanukkah. But there is still time to get last minute gifts for the wildlife photographer in your life. And I'm gonna give you some ideas that aren't gonna break the bank. So the first suggestion that I have is for a pair of binoculars. Binoculars when you're out in the field can just be super helpful. When I first started, I really resisted getting binoculars. I thought that I could just use my camera to zoom in on something. But the truth is that doing that with your camera is just cumbersome and it's a lot easier to just have a pair of binoculars that you can bring up to your face and look down a beach or down a marsh or something like that to be able to determine what is around you and what you potentially want to photograph. So these are my binoculars here. These are by Pentax. They're pretty good. The only thing that I don't really like about them is that they're a little bit heavy and they're a little bit large. It, they're too big to fit in a pocket or in, even in my hip bag that I wear um, on my waist when I'm out photographing that carries my memory cards and extra batteries and things like that. So what usually happens is I take them off my neck if they're getting in the way and I just kind of toss them on the ground, which is not the best. The good thing about binoculars, even though they really run the gamut from being extremely cheap, I think the cheapest I saw on Amazon was like $20 way up to like thousands of dollars. The good news is that bird photographers don't really need really expensive binoculars. And I saw a lot of pairs of binoculars on Amazon that were like less than $100 that were pretty well reviewed. I linked one of those in the description below. I have no experience with that particular pair, but it was well reviewed and they were fairly small and compact and they were fairly in inexpensive. And so I linked it for those reasons. I really would recommend going someplace like your local camera store if they have binoculars there, if they sell them. You may also be able to get them used in a place like that. I got mine at a Massachusetts Audubon gift shop. If you guys are in the Boston area and are a Massachusetts Audubon member, you get a 10% discount at any gift shop. And uh, I got these at the Drumlin Farm gift shop in Lincoln, Mass. If you're looking online for binoculars, something to note is that the binoculars are gonna give you a couple of numbers. Like if you can see, there, there we go. If you can see there that it's got two numbers, the first number is usually something like eight or 10 or 12, something in that range. And that is the zoom. So mine, for instance, are 10, it says 10 here. So, the object that I'm looking at in my binoculars is gonna zoom in 10 times. So it's gonna be 10 times closer than it is at in actuality. The second number on my binoculars is 36. Sometimes it's 42, sometimes it's, I don't know, 24 maybe, I don't know. But that number has to do with how large this part is. The higher the number, the bigger they are and the more light they let in. Next suggestion is hand and toe warmers. These are pretty straightforward. If your favorite wildlife photographer goes out in cold conditions, toe and hand warmers can just be a huge help. It's really hard for us to keep our hands and toes warm. Sometimes we're just kind of sitting there for a long time. So having a little bit of extra help in that regard, it can be a real lifesaver. Like every other product I'm gonna be talking about, there is a link in the description below if you wanna check it out. The great thing about hand and toe warmers is they come in a lot of different number, like packs. So if you wanna get like a 30 pack, you can get those. If you wanna do like a more of a stocking stuffer thing, you can get like a four or six or whatever pack. Going along with the cold weather suggestions is another product and it's called Micro Spikes. And this is basically, it fits onto your boot and these little spiky things here create much better traction on hard packed snow, ice, and things like that. And they really hold onto my boots really well. I've got a couple of different boots that I wear in the winter time when I'm photographing, just depending on how cold it is. And they fit really nicely around both. And I just feel a lot more confident when I'm wearing them. When you're out there photographing and you, you're carrying a lot of really expensive gear, it's just nice to have some more stable footing. And these really help create that. So 
it's a really great peace of mind and makes kind of walking around in the winter time with your gear a little less stressful. Next up is a headlamp. This is the headlamp that I use. This is by a company called Coast. Coast makes some really great flashlights. I really love their flashlights. I do a fair amount of night photography, mostly landscapes, astrophotography, things like that. And I use Coast flashlights to light paint, it creates some more interesting landscapes by adding artificial light to my scene. So it was sort of a no brainer for me to get their headlamp. And I'll just put it on so that you can see how cool I'm gonna look, right? Oh yeah, definitely. All right, that's enough of that. On this side here, you've got three different options in terms of light intensity for a white light, for a bright light. And on this side, you have a red light. And a red light can be really helpful, especially if your wildlife photographer also does night photography, because a red light can give you a light source, but your eyes don't have to readjust once it's turned off, which is the case with a bright white light, right? You, you turn it on and it's really bright, but you can see what you're doing and then you turn it off and then your eyes have to readjust. But with the red light, you don't have to do that. So this can be really great for a wildlife photographer who likes to go out really, really early in the morning and has to walk a significant distance to get to their photography destination on a trail or something where it's not gonna be very well lit. Having a hands-free light source can be really helpful then. And also if you're coming back after a sunset shoot where again, you're on a trail and you're not, and there's not gonna be a lot of light and you just wanna be able to see your way a little bit better. This is a really great option for that and it fits really easily into a pocket or into a pouch or bag. And it's just a really great thing to have. And I think every you know photographer should have one of these in their bag just in case they find themselves out at times of day where the light's not great. Next, field guides. Now I know a lot of people like to use the Merlin app to identify the birds that they're seeing, but I really like having a field guide, an actual book that I can flip through. Because I just think that being able to get the ID yourself in a book as opposed to an app telling you what a bird is, I think really helps strengthen your bird ID skills a lot better. And also the other thing that is, is advantageous for a bird guide, because you're flipping through this book and as you're flipping through this book, you're flipping through all sort of different species that aren't right for maybe that particular ID. But later you could say, oh, I remember that bird because I saw it in, in a section of my book. And even if your bird photographer has a guide already, having another one can't hurt. You know, I keep one in my Van Hedwig and then I keep one in my house. And this one I really like a lot. This is Sibley's Guide to Eastern Birds and there is a Western birds counterpart. The one that I have in the van is a North is a much more comprehensive book. It's the, I think it's the National Geographic. It's the birds of North America. So it's, it covers a lot more area, which is a better thing for me to have in the van because I'm more likely to need that when I'm in the van than when I'm at home. So I keep the Eastern birds book at home and it's kind of beat up and a little stained, but it's still pretty good. And if your favorite wildlife photographer doesn't photograph birds, there are certainly other guides. If your wildlife photographer likes, say, the national parks, you can get them a national parks guide. There also could definitely be other field guides out there that are more specific to what they like to photograph, whether it's mammals or reptiles or something like that. But having a guide can just be helpful, I think. And I also have a few options that will require a little bit of sleuthing on your part, at least a little more than the other suggestions that I've already mentioned because you need to have a little bit more specific information about your uh, favorite wildlife photographer's gear. Uh, one is camera batteries. There's no such thing as having too many camera batteries and they can be a little bit expensive sometimes, at least more expensive than maybe you think they're gonna be. I know that my Sony batteries, the Z batteries for the A9 and the A7R 3 are like 80 bucks a piece. And I would really recommend getting the Sony ones versus getting a cheaper brand. The Sony ones last longer and they hold their charge better in my opinion. And I think that that's pretty much the case for a lot of other camera manufacturers as well. It's a really good stocking stuffer option. Another great small thing is memory cards. Now different cameras take different memory cards. Some take SD cards, some take compact, compact flash cards. And something to note if you're going to gift 
a memory card is that not all memory cards are created equal. And if you go and you look at different pricing, you'll notice that some cards are a lot more expensive than others. And really the main reason why that is, it has to do with how large the card is, how many photographs it holds, but also how fast it is. And wildlife photographers really value fast cards. So I would suggest getting a faster card with less memory, with less space on it, if that's like if that's an issue for you in terms of affordability. Getting a card that is faster with less space is better than a really slow card with more space, in my opinion. It can be really, really uh, frustrating to be waiting for the buffer to clear because the card just can't write your photos to it as fast as other cards can. So I would really recommend getting a fast card if you can. So those are my suggestions, everyone. I hope this list was inspiring to you. I hope that it gave you some ideas for gifts for your favorite wildlife photographer. As always, if you like this video, please click the thumbs up button. Please subscribe to my channel if you're so inclined. It would really help me out a lot. You can also find me on Instagram. I post a lot of my work on Instagram. It's the best way to see it. You can also join my Patreon page for as little as $2 a month. You can get early access to videos like this along with a bunch of other really cool stuff. So I hope to see you over there. Until the next video, everybody, take care. Happy adventuring, happy shooting. Happy holidays. See you later. Bye.